In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm sure you all know well what we call the litany of Loretto, Our Lady's litany. I said it this morning at another church. It's not often said these days, Some people think it's too long in this fast age. But it's a beautiful prayer. A number of invocations to Mary, beginning with Jesus and then to Mary. It's a list of praises. And it's most interesting because many of them, many of the things said about Mary are taken from the Old Testament. And they sound a bit odd. I'm sure we've wondered why we should be calling Mary uh, House of Gold or Ark of the Covenant or uh, these names that um, are a little bit strange to us. Well, today I just want to talk about two of those little invocations in the litany. Mary called the Ark of the Covenant and go back biblically to find out what's behind that. And then the other one is uh, something far more, far easier. Mary is Queen. Queen of Apostles, Queen of Martyrs, Queen of Confessors, etc. Then in fact there are 14, if I'm not wrong, invocations to Mary under the title Queen. But first, the Ark of the Covenant. You all know what the Ark of the Covenant was, I'm sure. (coughs) The Ark of the Covenant was kept in the temple, in the Holy of Holies. But it had a long history. Under Moses again, Moses ordered under God, God's inspiration, that uh, a special holy container be made. So he had made the Ark and he called it the Ark of the Covenant. When Moses received the two tablets of stone, that was the, what, the text of the covenant, the covenant, that solemn agreement between God and his people, a covenant. And it's often written, this was written by God on two tablets of stone and we know them as the Ten Commandments. A covenant is a solemn relationship where God is saying, I will be faithful to you. You will be faithful to me and this is what I expect, the Ten Commandments. Moses added about 700 more after that, uh, regulating almost every aspect of life. But they all come from the ten that God gave Moses. That was the text of the great covenant between God and his people through Moses. So he wanted to keep these tablets and he was inspired to set up what he called and what we call an ark. Not the ark of Noah which was a big boat, but um, the ark was simply a box roughly a metre wide, a metre deep, and a metre across. So, almost like a cube, but not quite. It was a box made of acacia wood. Beautiful box. And uh, the, the top of it was lined in gold. And two Angels, cherubim, were designed, one on each side of the box, looking at each other. That the top of the box, the top of the ark, um, was called by Moses the mercy seat. The seat of mercy. There were four, what you call rollicks, rings at each uh, edge of the ark, the box, and poles were fashioned 
so that the poles could go in the rings and that the men would carry the ark around. And they did. The ark was carried into war and stood with the armies. The ark was carried in solemn processions around Mount Sinai and other places. The ark was um, part and parcel of the people. Why? Because of the Ten Commandments? Yes, but the real reason was that the Ten Commandments uh, signified the abiding presence of God among his people. The abiding presence of God among his people. And uh, uh, at times, oh, and then Moses put it in a big tabernacle, a big tent. That's what the word means, a big tent. Because it, they would move it from place to place. And I've written down some of the places where it, it stayed, sometimes for hundreds of years. It was first at Sinai, at the foot of the mountain. It moved then to Gilgal, to Shiloh, to Bethel, to other places. And some of those names you would remember, people call holy places by the name of Bethel or Gilgal or Shiloh, because the Ark of the Covenant was um, rested there. And uh, finally, in Jerusalem, when the temple was built, the Ark of the Covenant was placed behind the screen in the Holy of Holies. The tabernacle out in the desert was also called the Holy of Holies. It was the presence of God. And sometimes we are told that the glory of God would fill the tent. The glory of God, the Shekinah is the Hebrew word. It was a mist. It came and filled the tent like a cloud, like a mist. And uh, shone brightly. It's referred to in the transfiguration of Jesus. But that's another talk. It was the glory of God was coming down over the tabernacle, filling the, all the tabernacle with this mysterious glory of God, the Shekinah, the, the glowing, glorious mist which symbolized God's presence around the Ark of the Covenant. You can see where I'm heading. Why do we call Mary the Ark of the Covenant? Because when she, she carried the child Jesus in her womb, she was like the Ark of the Covenant. She carried the presence of God in her womb. Jesus, God's only Son. The people of the time would have understood that, but this is a phrase that has developed over the years, and the early fathers referred to Mary as the Ark of the Covenant. What happened to the original Ark? We don't know, but uh, it's presumed that when Jerusalem was sacked and ruined and the temple was nearly destroyed, um, uh, when the Assyrians uh, attacked um, Jerusalem six centuries before Christ and took the people over to Babylon, then um, in captivity for over 50 years, it is said that there's no more mention of the Ark being here or there, it, may, it could have been taken away, buried, as some people believe. Some people believe it's hidden still in Ethiopia, and uh, there's a little shrine to that effect, but it's never opened, we don't know. But it simply disappeared at one point of history. So when Jesus went to the temple, the Holy of Holies was there, was the ark there? There's no mention. We don't know for sure. The ark contained the tablets of stone. The ark contained a, a bowl of manna that they collected from the fields. The ark contained the rod of Aaron, which blossomed to show that he was the one chosen by God, Aaron, Moses' brother. Holy objects. The holy objects were probably still there. The tablets, 
Who knows? Mary is called the Ark of the Covenant because she carried within her the presence of God in Jesus. So we can, when we say Ark of the Covenant about Mary, we are saying something that goes back hundreds and hundreds of years, nearly a thousand years, to the building of the Ark of the Covenant. She's the Ark of the New Covenant. The New Covenant was established by the blood of Jesus. He spoke of it at the Last Supper. The New Covenant between the new people and uh, the Almighty God, who is now seen to be the true God for the whole world. And that covenant was sealed by the blood of Jesus. He is the new victim, the new sacrifice of the covenant. So it's a great honour to Mary that within her womb she should hold the Saviour of the world, the one who offered his life for the world for those nine months. Truly a, a beautiful uh, title of Mary, Ark of the Covenant. And there are places around the world where the artists have made Mary during her nine months of pregnancy. And there are signs that she's pregnant. They are very, very holy images because they conjure up for us the new Ark of the Covenant, the new Ark of the New Covenant, Mary. And we remember the great privilege that she had of being conceived by the Holy Spirit so the Word was made flesh for us. The other title was that of Queen. We can't really talk about Queen in this context until we talk about King. Because Jesus preached the Kingdom of God. So we must have a King. What did he say about the Kingdom of God? And where does Mary come in? He said much about the kingdom of God because it's a mysterious, complex idea. He said the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is among you. The kingdom of God has come. The kingdom of God is not yet here. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of the Father. The kingdom of God is my kingdom, so we call Jesus Christ the King. A lot of confusing uh, statements, and yet they're all true. The kingdom of God. Mary is the queen of this kingdom. In what sense? Well, let's, well, first of all, because of the honour that she received to bear the child Jesus given great honour. And so we have one of the mysteries of the Rosary, where she is the crowned Queen of Heaven. We see her as receiving huge privilege in the Kingdom of God, and so we rightly call her Queen, our Queen and Mother. She's not divine, she's one of us, but she's Queen of Heaven because her Son was divine, as well as taking on human flesh. So she's queen. When, we, when Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you, he was talking about what happens within the hearts of those who follow Jesus and believe in him. The kingdom of God is a way of life. The kingdom of God, nothing to do with jealousy, envy, hatred, murderous thoughts, lust, stealing, any of these things. The Kingdom of God is about love, about compassion, about forgiveness, about being peacemakers, about reconciliation, about humility, about kindness. And it is an expression of how God wants this world to be, how God wants you and me to be, and also a foretaste of heaven. 
Mary, we can say that the kingdom of God was within her. We hear in the Bible about Mary's silence. She kept all these things in her heart. She was there with Jesus, not only at his conception, his birth, his childhood, but during his life, because she outlived him. He died 33, they say. Mary was still alive. She accompanied Jesus all through his life on earth. And she kept all these things in her heart, how her son would talk about his father. And he wasn't referring to Joseph. He said, I have come to do the will of my father. He said that at the age of 12, he had already accepted that his father was the divine father. He said well, he grew in wisdom and knowledge. So in his humanity, it became clearer and clearer that he was the son of God made man in his humanity. He also, uh, uh, Mary also kept in her mind the tragedy that she saw. Her son preaching and teaching, being accepted, and being loved, followed, and then being plotted against, then being uh, uh, cornered, then being taken prisoner, accused of all sorts of things, and uh, finally being handed over to the Roman authorities to be killed on the cross. She was there when Jesus rose from the dead. She was there when Jesus ascended into heaven. And she was there when the Holy Spirit came down upon the infant church at Pentecost. What a figure, a constant figure through all this, rightly called Queen. So she's queen um, because um, the kingdom of God was already within her. In her love for us, her love for a son, her concern for the children of God, concern for us and our problems. She keeps all these things in her heart and she holds them up to her son in prayer. The kingdom of God is among you the influence she must have had on those around her, this holy woman. No one could accuse her of anything, nor about her son either, this holy woman. We say too that the kingdom of God is the church, but the church is made up of sinners. How can it be the kingdom of God? They are called to live now the kingdom. We are called now to live the kingdom. We do it imperfectly. But Jesus didn't just convert individuals. He wanted people to be a church, to be a people. And we, we have sinners. We all expect to be saints, but we are sinners. And uh, that doesn't stop the kingdom of God abiding in the church because we have the sacraments, we have the grace of God, we have all the helps needed to be free of those sins and to grow in holiness. Mary is our queen too, mother of the church. She is our queen of this kingdom as well, the kingdom of the church. And therefore, as a people, we honour her. We're just reflecting earlier on in the Protestant Re Reformation, where they insisted so much on the Bible it is hard for me to understand those days because when I read the Bible, I see the things that that Protestant River, uh, Reformation left out. I see confirmed the Eucharist, the Last Supper, the Mass, which was abolished by so many. I see also the position of Mary being queen, being out of the covenant and all those titles we give her because that too is there in the pages of the Bible, the honour given to Mary. So maybe when we are all to be one, as Jesus wants us to be one, 
We don't throw out the Bible. We look more closely and perhaps under the word of God we can come together again as we should. So today let us honour Mary by our presence, by our prayers. Accept her as our Queen and ask that the Kingdom of God grow in our hearts, that we change, we'd be different people, that sin has no, um, no uh, more um, evidence of it in our lives. It's a constant struggle that we grow constantly to be like Mary, sinless. Let us also remember, as we say the litany of Our Lady, when we come to Ark of the Covenant, we say what a beautiful story. That great Ark, which was the centre of the temple worship, which was the centre of worship out in the desert long before the temple was built, reminds us of the presence of God and that Mary is the new um, Ark of the Covenant because she had held within her own self when she was pregnant the Holy of Holies, the Son of God, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.